Africa is not a country by Marty Burns Knight and Mark Melnikov illustrated by Anne Sibley O'Brien The sun is just rising as Arim and Ephraim get up to prepare for school. They take showers, change into school uniforms and comb their hair while listening to children's programs on the radio. After a breakfast of sweet hot tea and bread with butter and marmalade, they put on their book bags. Their parents gently place their hands on their heads and say, May God be with you the whole day. The boys kiss their parents' hands and respond, Yeken yelai, which means thank you in Tigrinya, a widely spoken language in Eritrea. Before they walk out of the door with their father, who is going to his office downtown Asmara, the boys are reminded by their mother to always respect their teachers and elders. It is early morning in Palepo, a village in Cameroon. Before breakfast, Mamtu spends an hour selling fresh milk from the gourd she carries on her head. Tepe washes the dishes while Nkolu and Fola collect firewood and take several trips to the well. Their chores will be complete when there is enough water and firewood for the day. After a breakfast of pap, a cereal made from corn, the children will walk to school with their friends. Classes start in a few minutes. Kip and Arangi know they won't be late because they are so quick. Every day they run several miles to school through the highlands of Kenya. Both Arangi and Kip want to join a running team when they get to high school. They love to run long distances. When they are older, the children hope to train as marathon runners so that they can compete with the fastest races from all over the world. With Pula in hand, Mapula walks to a corner store to buy fresh bread for breakfast. Pula is the name of the currency in Botswana. It is also the word for rain in Setswana, a language spoken by over a million people. Since rain is often scarce, it is very important to the people who live there. Sometimes, babies are named after the different kinds of rain. Mapula is a name for Mother of Rain. On wintry July mornings, Thomas and his father wrap blankets around their shoulders to keep warm in the Drakensberg mountains of Lesotho. Lehloa is a word for snow in Sesotho, the main language spoken in Lesotho. There are very few words for snow in Africa's 1,000 other languages because it never snows in most countries. In Lesotho, the path can be slippery, so father and son use mountain savvy ponies to travel to the market and then to visit friends and relatives. Mona, Basma and Hala spill out of their homes in Cairo to walk to school on charmed sidewalks. Mona likes to leave early so that she can stop at the kiosk to buy hot spicy beans and bread for breakfast. The students walk by early morning traffic jams, passing apartment buildings and ancient mosques. If they choose to walk down by the Nile, they would see ships from all over the world anchored in the river's harbors. Cairo, which means victorious in Arabic, is Egypt's capital and Africa's largest city. As the teacher talks about their country's history, Abena and Doreen remember the dance they performed at last year's Independence Day Parade. On March 6, 1957, the Gold Coast declared its independence from Great Britain and changed its name to Ghana. It was the first West African colony to become a nation. Today, children in every African country celebrate an independence on Nation Day. Chip, Farai, Rudo, 
and the other children are practicing for a choir concert later today in another part of Harare. They will sing two songs, one about the seasonal rains that help the crops to grow and the other about the abundance of wildlife in Zimbabwe. Each song will be sung in English and Shona. Zimbabwe means stone enclosure in Shona, which is both the name and language of the people who built the kingdom of Great Zimbabwe about 700 years ago. The mid-morning sun is already hot when Cyprien asks Justine to help him and the other children draw stories in the sand. They are making pictures about the fighting in Rwanda. They show how they were trapped by men with guns and knives who destroyed their villages. Tens of thousands of children live in refugee camps. Most of them are thought to be orphans. Some of the children will be reunited with their families, but for the majority, there is little hope that they will see their parents again. Walkers in the camp toil around the clock to cook meals and take care of the children. Mohamed, Safi and her baby sister do not stand too close to the tired camels, which have just finished a 500 mile trek from the salt mines of northern Mali to Timbuktu. Founded upon an oasis, this 900-year-old city has long been associated with mystery and wealth. The valuable slabs of shiny white salt, about 70 pounds each, will be taken off the camels and piled into taxis, which will drive the salt to boats bound for the city of Mopti on the Niger River. From Mopti, the salt will be loaded onto trucks headed for neighboring countries whose people will use it to season their food. On Fogo, an island within the island nation of Cape Verde, Maria, Carolina and Celso work in the fields. They have milked the goats and weeded the plants. Carolina shoes away the crows and keeps the hungry goats out of the watermelon and squash patches. Just before lunch, the children dig up sweet potatoes. They will bring them to their father Jose, who has been farming with them all morning. He will roast the potatoes over an open fire and serve them with goat's milk. All morning, Lydia, his wife, has been selling goods to her customers in town. She will come home in time to eat lunch with her family before returning to her shop. Sena, Celeste and Darin have come to the market in Cotonou, Benin's busiest city, to buy beans and tomatoes for lunch. As Sena holds her cousin's hand, she greets each vendor. When she says, Mifonia, or Mifonan, or Mifonde, or Ejilada, or Ejitada, or Bonjour. She hears two little voices repeat each greeting. The Mi greetings are in the Fon, Guan, and Mina languages. Sena speaks Fon at home. It is similar to Guan and Mina, which Sena has learned to speak from friends and relatives. Ejitada is Yoruba. Sena's grandmother is Yoruba so she speaks the language well. The French bonjour is not heard as often as other greetings, but Sena speaks it every day in school. Every afternoon, sounds of kicking, passing and scoring echo through the backyards, streets and parks of the coastal city of Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire. Henry and his friends play soccer for hours on end. In their neighborhood, all the players pitch in a few francs to buy a ball. This time, Henry is keeper of the ball. He will take it home between games. When not playing, the boys may be watching their favorite team on television. If soccer games are not carried on TV, they are broadcast in 10 local languages on the radio. In her family's tent in the Sahara Desert in Mauritania, Fatima greets afternoon guests with tea. As she pours a hot sweet drink, her sister Asha watches it foam in the glasses. While the grown-ups visit, 
Fatima will paint Asha's hand with bright, intricate patterns made from the powder of henna leaves. Later, Fatima and Asha will share loha, a wooden tablet used to study verses from the Quran, the holy book of the Muslim people. The girls will learn passages by chanting them out loud. Priscilla and Mary have been traveling for several hours, so they are hungry. They poke their heads out of the window to buy some bananas, of which there are at least 17 varieties in Tanzania. Today, the girls have two choices. Their uncle has gone into the Duca to buy them cold drinks. The girls hope that the man who drives the Basi will soon tell all of the passengers to get back on board. They want to get to their grandmothers in time to play with their cousins before supper. Every afternoon, Mariam, Umar and their friends play leapfrog and marbles on the beach in Senegal as they wait for the fishing boats to return with the day's catch. As soon as the boats are patched, the fishermen begin to divide the several hundred ocean perch and redfish. A few fish are given to those who help to push the boats out into the surf that morning. Each fishing family gets a share of the fish. Even if a fisherman is sick and can't work, fish are set aside for his family. The remainder are often sold to a buyer from the car who shows up in a truck. Dihab and Makone want their mother to hurry into the car so they can get to the National Museum in Addis Ababa to see the Lucy exhibit. Lucy is one of the reasons that Africa is referred to as the cradle of the humankind. More than 3 million years old, Lucy's remains were unearthed in 1974 in eastern Ethiopia. Paleoanthropologists were thrilled at how much of Lucy's skeleton was found. Only 4 inches tall, Lucy was a full-grown hominid and like us, she walked on two legs. It is not known exactly how Lucy is related to modern day humans. That is why it is exciting whenever a fossil is found in Africa. It may provide a missing link to our past. Taj and Josephine dig small holes in the sand of Sudan to play a game of siega. Both children count and toss stones from hole to hole. Josephine wins because she captures the most stones. Almost immediately, Taj sets up his stone for a second game. Siega, which is called Gebeta in Eritrea, Tsoro in Zimbabwe, and Mankala in Liberia, is played by children and grown-ups throughout Africa and the world. Many archaeologists think that Mankala is the world's oldest game. Stone carvings of Mankala boards have been found in ancient Egyptian pyramids and temples. Ondel and Mbo have just finished soccer practice. Even though they are hungry, it is not time for supper. Hot and thirsty, they have plopped down on the couch, sipping from glasses of cool water as they watch cartoons. After the shows, the boy and Ondel's sister will go to Umbo's house to eat salted fish with mushrooms, fufu and cassava leaves. If they are still hungry, they may go back to Undel's house for more fufu and fish. Fufu is made from cassava roots, which have been ground into flour and cooked in boiling water. These roots are bigger than a potato. The large leafy greens of the cassava plant are a delicious vegetable enjoyed not only throughout the children's country, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but elsewhere in tropical Africa. Tendi and Tato are just home from school in Soweto, South Africa. They stayed after to practice a play about three Nobel Peace Prize winners from South Africa. Chief Albert John Lutuli, the Reverend Desmond Tutu, and President Nelson Mandela dedicated their lives to seeing that all people were treated fairly, regardless of their skin color. Their grandmother, Nombini, is home from work. She has cooked a large pot of curried chicken and vegetables. 
the children's mother, Matabu, and their uncle Oliver will not return from their jobs in Johannesburg until after Tenzi and Tato have washed the dishes and finished their homework. Mmm, the alluring fragrance of onions, red pepper and ginger waft through Hamed's apartment in Algiers, the capital of Algeria. Tonight, his mother has steamed and served couscous, the national dish with spices and lamb in a big pan. Couscous, which is made from wheat and sometimes mixed, is sometimes mixed with honey, cinnamon and almonds to make a, a dessert pudding. As the common plate of food is shared and savoured, Ahmed and his family tell jokes and sip apricot juice. Chuba wants to get it right. His father, uncles and grandfathers are watching to see if he's dancing exactly the same way as they did when they were boys. Nearly every evening after supper, Chuba puts on his traditional outfit to practice the ancient dances of the Igbo of southeastern Nigeria. As he concentrates on what his teachers are showing him, he wonders if he will be one of the few boys his age to be chosen to perform this year at weddings, Christmas celebrations and harvest festivals. Other boys will be picked to sing and drum. Orala tells the first riddle because she yelled Guga. I am telling you a riddle in Somali before the others. They are playing Gogalaisi, a 1000 year old game from Somalia. You are in a canoe and must cross the river with only three things, a goat, a cheetah and a patch of grass. You can take only two items with you in the canoe at one time. You cannot take the goat with the grass or the cheetah with the goat, because the goat would eat the grass and the cheetah would eat the goat. So what do you do? With a huge grin, Samata shouts, Adali, I know the answer. First, cross with the goat. Come back for the grass, drop it off, but after dropping it off, bring back the goat. Get the cheetah but leave the goat behind. Finally, come back for the goat and cross the river. Hodan cries, go go! And the game begins again. It is just about dark when city bus number 15 from Antananarivo pulls up in front of the Tim Zoo. Didier, Charlotte and Benoit are the first three students to scramble off the bus. They quickly get in line to buy tickets for the night visit to watch an ayaye, a nocturnal lemur that has ears like a bat and a tail like a fox. There are more than 50 varieties of lemurs in Madagascar. The children are delighted to find that the tiny ayaye are awake when they reach them. The sun has set, the children have finished their chores and brushed their teeth and the stars are shining in the sky over Togo. Abla hopes to hear the story about market day held each Tuesday near her house. Afi wants to hear about the little girl and the lion. Kofi smiles as his father begins to speak. Once there was a wise little girl whose mother told her that if she was home alone she should not let anyone in unless she heard the secret password. Though she has heard the story many times before, Afi's eyes grow white when a sneaky lion tries to trick the girl into opening the door. But the lion doesn't know the password and the girl is not fooled. The children want another story, but it's late and they have to get up early for school. Before being tucked into bed, they will say prayers with their parents to give thanks for another long full day. Don't want to, no man, you're not sick, no, you're not, 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 you're not